Schools are closed, teachers and students alike are at home, wondering how to get through a curriculum, with distance learning now being the new normal. Google Classroom can help with some of this and convey a curriculum from a classroom to the home device. Teachers can set assignments, set quizzes, have video conferences with their classes and record progress. Today we're going to look at how to make a quiz within Google Classroom and it really couldn't be easier. So here we are in our classwork section of our English Literature Year 6 class. Now I've already got a Harry Potter section, however, I think it's probably worthwhile having another section and this one we're going to call The Hobbit. We'll add a topic in. Okay, so you can see using topics are a really good way of segmenting up your work. We're here though primarily to talk about quizzes. We are going to create a quiz assignment. Title. At the top, the Hobbit quiz. Answer all questions after reviewing the text. Pretty simple, straightforward. You haven't got to put instructions in there. Completely optional. But it's always worthwhile to give your students as much information as they possibly can before embarking on any topic, especially if it's going to be graded. And let's talk about that. Over on the right hand side, you can see that this quiz is being created in the English Literature classroom. There it is. You can see the other class. I could also assign that to if there's a bit of overlap. In fact, Media Studies could benefit from this as well. We'll say all students in all classes, or you could potentially select individual students who you wanted to have the quiz. Imagine this. Imagine if a student was taking a holiday in term time, for example, and you wanted to set some reading. The parents have asked. You could set a quiz that you've got in your backlog, on your OneDrive, in your Google Drive, wherever your storage platform is and set them a quiz to see if they've actually been doing a bit of work when their parents said they have. A bit cruel, I know, when you're on holiday, you're on holiday, but think of a child who's also sick and they've got required reading to do. You can select the maximum number of points here for this quiz, so we're going to keep that at 100. You can say when the quiz is going to be due, well let's say the 26th of May, and the topic is going to be The Hobbit. Now rubrics we're going to leave there at the moment, that's a completely different video. But what a rubric does is allow you to be completely transparent with how you're going to be scoring this particular assignment. Now as this is a quiz, um, you're either kind of right or wrong, unless you have plain text fields and we can come on to that in a minute. Either way, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to click on blank quiz. Okay, so what do you want our quiz called? The Hobbit quiz. There and back again. Let's put a space in. Great. So here we are and we already have our title for our quiz. The Hobbit. There and back again. Answer the questions. Okay. So before we get into the questions, let's set the theme for our quiz. So you have some options. Clicking on the palette, as you can see, brings up the theme options. You can choose an image or you can select a, a theme color. So let's stick a nice blue theme. That seems quite stony and more in tune with what we're doing. And then let's choose an image. Now, Google has already set some themes conducive to learning. Books, chemistry, biology, that sort of thing. Or there are more fun ones. Wedding quizzes, sports and games. Or you can look at your photos. Or you can upload an image. So let's click browse. Here's a nice Hobbit picture I popped in there. There you go. That's our header. We can move the selection of the image around to get as much in as we possibly can. See if we can get in just about everybody. We can add a caption. There and back again. 
then. And then before long, our image will embellish the top of our quiz. Nice and easy. Got a font style as well. Basic, decorative for that arty farty look. Or you can go for formal or playful. All depends what sort of theme and what, what angle you want this quiz to have. So let's go on to basic. Why not keep things simple? You can preview what you've got so far, how a student would see it by look, clicking on the eye. There's our eye, nothing to do there. Um, and also you've got the settings, the settings of the quiz. Do you want to collect email addresses? Well, I typically do collect email addresses of the students who do my quizzes. Also, do we want to limit it to one response? Think of this this way. Do you want people to take this quiz multiple times? Do you want them to go on there, read the book, and then take the quiz and then grade them on that? In which case then, limit it to one response. You only want people in our organization to use this quiz and you don't want students to edit it after it's been submitted, but do you want to see the summary charts and text responses? Well, yeah, why not? With the presentation, do you want to show a progress bar or shuffle the question order? Well, you can do. It's up to you. Do you want to have a confirmation message? Your response has been recorded. Well, thank you for submitting your quiz on The Hobbit. Do a bit of formatting and then go to quizzes. We've made it a quiz. It doesn't have to be, it can just be a form. We're making it a quiz. Um, do you want to release the marks for the quiz directly after you've submitted it? Or if you have some free text fields, you might want to turn on later after manual review. Now we're typically just gonna handle multiple choice in this quiz, but if you wanna have things where people type in free text and you as the instructor or teacher educator have to review it, then you have to turn on later after manual review. Okay, so we're gonna go immediately after each submission. Respondents can see the missed questions. They can see the correct answers and the point values. Well, do you know what? Let's take the correct answers off. And let's click save. So that is theoretically how we set up our quiz. We've gone through the theme, we've seen what it looks like, and we've gone to the settings. We've put a nice picture up that sets the theme for our quiz. Okay, moving on. Now, what do we do? We're gonna put in some questions about The Hobbit. So first off, we're gonna add a question, right? Or you're gonna import a question, or you're gonna add a title and description, or you can add a picture, or add a video, or add a section. Well, just like topics, I think it's very important to have a section. So first off, we're gonna say this section, this section is gonna be characters of The Hobbit, right? And we'll leave that there. We'll move up to the first initial quiz, and we're gonna have a question in here. Let's add a question. Right, question one, and these will be general questions, and then we'll get down into the different topics like characters. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, um, for example, how many hobbits went on the great adventure? Should be quite simple. Um, we'll make it multiple choice, although you have a selection of typing in a short answer, a paragraph, as I just mentioned, uh, multiple choice, check boxes. If there's more than one, you can select a drop down box from a selected list. You can upload a file, and you've got linear scales, multiple choice grids, and tick box grids, which probably won't tend to lend itself, but we'll see if we can use some of these as well. So we'll keep it multiple choice. Option one. How many hobbits went on the great adventure? And we can say, for example, one, two, six, twelve. Done. Now, 
Along each side one of these, you can add yourself a little image, should you want to. Put it a bit in context. You can also duplicate this question and then change the answer, saves you doing all the donkey work. You can remove it or you can make it a required question. We're going to make this a required question so every student has to answer. Okay, and these three dots, the ellipsis here, you can show the description, go to a section based on answer or shuffle or option order. All right, we're going to leave things as they are. We'll just say, we'll leave it as it is. Okay, so straight off, there's our first question. Answer key. Look at this, all right? This allows you to put in your self-marking and put in the answers. So let Google Classroom do all your work. So how many hobbits went on the great adventure? Well, we know that to be one. There was Bilbo Baggins. Job done. And how many points? Well, this question, Kanda, the individual who answers it. Well, 10 points. And then we click done. At the top, now we've got questions. We've also got responses, all right? Responses tells us who's actually been doing the quiz. Quite interesting. So moving on to our next section. So time for our next question. Let's do a different format of question this time. So we'll go on to the next section. Here we go, uh, next question. Uh, how many dwarves were in the Thorin Oakenshield party? Again, bit of formatting, question. Now it's suggesting that this would be a short answer. Although we can use multiple choice, we could use the drop down box, we could use check boxes, completely up to you. If you went for multiple choice, it's a bit more of the same. You may want to mix things up with your students and do something a little bit different. So we're going to go with short answer. All right, so the suggested correct answer is 13 dwarves, or you can have a number. So our short answer text here, all right, 13 dwarves, all right, we're going to come in here is a number 13, all right, no problem. What's the answer? 13 dwarves, add a correct answer, 13. Mark all other answers as incorrect. 10 points for this, add an answer feedback, and lucky for some, for example. Now, with this, we've added a short answer in there, not free text, it's a short answer. We, we can be definitive and add this, number 13, as what we want, or we can have 13 dwarfs. Now, we've got two answers here. What's it gonna be? Can you either add that as a text, we can just say 13, the number, or 13. Each one of those will candor 10 points, or 10 points as being the maximum correct answer. That's fine. All of the else is going to be wrong. So let's click on done. Right. Okay, okay. Everything's fine. Let's go on to our next question. So we've set a multiple choice, we've set a short answer. What's next? Well, we may need a little bit of help doing this one. So, out of the dwarf party, what were their names? Now, this says we can have either a long answer text, or we could have check boxes or we can have a multiple choice grid. Ooh, let's go for a multiple choice grid or a tick, bo tick box grid. Okay, let's go for a tick box grid. So row one, um, and let's use um, notepad as well to help us out here. Here are the dwarf names, because I can't remember them all. I know a lot of them, but not, not that many. Then we can start cutting them in each in turn. Add a ringer in there. Q 
Healy, Feely, and so on. As you go through each of the dwarf characters. So there's our rows. So what columns? Column one. Yes. Another column. No. Quite simple. Let's see what that's going to look like. Let's do an answer grid, right? So we want, that's a yes, that's a yes, that's a no, that's a yes, and that's a yes. How many points? Each one is going to candor one point each. For example, we'll say done. What's this look like? Well, let's put a response in each row. Let's take a quick look at the preview. See previous responses. Oh. So as you can see, I've got my list of 25 options here. A big old question. We're going to require a response in each row. Okay, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. So we've got our quiz. There is our multiple choice. Each one has to be answered. Are you right or wrong? This is a hard topic for a student. Stand by your convictions. So let's go. Dwayne, Balin, Gandalf wasn't. Keeley, Feely, Dory, Pippin was a hobbit. Nori, Aragorn was a ranger. Row 10, that can be edited, um, etc, etc. And then you can submit your question. So pretty good. Pretty good. Let's leave that. So where's our row 10? We don't need that. I think we'll shift back up. Make sure we haven't got, we've got row 15 there again. Uh, no problems. I think it looks fantastic so far. And you can add additional columns. Yes, no, or you could say. So next off, we're gonna sit, we've got characters of the Hobbit. So with that selected, let's add a question into this section. Who was the arrowman of of the lake now this was bad but let's give it a drop down box option one bad add an option legolas aragorn gimli Bjorn. There you go. Let's hit the answer key. Who was the Arrowman of the Lake? We'll make this 10 points. Add answer feedback. Incorrect answers. Sorry. Uh, correct answers. Correct. Save. As you can see, we're going to select our arrowman from our list, from our drop down box. There you go. Okay, so for our next question in this topic, we're going to go for check boxes. This can be where there's more answers that are completely right. So let's think about this one. Dragons love one. Okay, gold, option two, eating, sleeping, treating with hobbits. Now, we all know dragons love a good snooze. We all know they love gold. Treating with hobbits? Well, Smorg had never met a hobbit until he'd met Bilbo. So... This could be quite interesting. We could have several questions that are right. So we'll make 10 points again. And of course you can see at the top we're at 62 points. Um, so you like gold, uh, they like sleeping, and they like treating with hobbits. Eating, well if they liked eating that much, he wouldn't have slept for a hundred years under the mountain, would he? So answer feedback, incorrect answers. Sorry, incorrect. Correct answers, 
Well done. And you can also link to a little video here or another link as well to confirm people's answers or even with the incorrect answers you could also confirm those with a video clip. So we're up to 10 points and done. That's not bad. So next up what we're going to do is we're going to add another question and we're going to call this who was the wizard in The Hobbit? So option one, we'll say Gandalf. Another option, Radagast. Um, Saruman. Okay, um, keep it multiple choice and we'll say Gandalf for our answer key. Gandalf and Saruman were both in The Hobbit. Also, so was Radagast. So, a bit of a trick question. But any one of those will get you 10 points. Hasn't only got to be one. So, something a little bit interesting. We'll make this a required question as well. So, next up, we're going to add a new section. Places of The Hobbit. Okay. Did they go in Middle Earth? Okay, moving on. Uh, let's add a first question in here. We'll go straight for a multiple choice grid. Okay. Here we go. Row one. We'll say Rivendell, Bree. Buckland, the Shire, Mirkwood, Mordor, the Lonely Mountain. Okay, columns. Again, we have yes, add column, no. That's multiple choice grid. Our answer key. We'll say, right, okay, Rivendell they went to, Bree they went to, didn't go to Buckland, although it was, it was mentioned in the book. The Shire they went there, they went to Mirkwood, didn't go to Mordor, not this time, and went to the Lonely Mountain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll make each of these two points each. Done. Now, again, you can put pictures in here, do what you want, and also make it a required response. In short, that effectively is how easy it is to make a quiz. Now, I'm up to total points of 86. Typically, we put a section of it being 100 points, so the quiz, no one can get 100 points and maximum points yet, so we've got to put another question, or at least inflate the amount of answers we've got here. So if we put in gold, or we'll inflate this by another five points, say done. Um, and then who was the wizard in The Hobbit? How many we got to do? We can do some more here. Answer key. You can see we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Done. Two more. There you have it. There is our quiz. All done. Nice and shiny. Again, I don't think we're making full use of what Google Classroom can do, but as a demonstration, an initial demonstration, I think this has been pretty good and pretty topical as well for people. Yes, you can make it as long as you want. You can have your scorings as long as you want, but let's see what it looks like to the student. Let's click on preview. Okay, so the Hobbit quiz, there and back again. It tells you that your email address will be recorded by your teacher when you submit the form. Okay, right, how many Hobbits were on the Great Adventure? One. How many Dwarfs were in Thor and Oak and Shield's party? So let's do 13. 13 it is. There you go. Um... Out of the Dwarf Party, what were their names? So then we can go through here. Just 
select some at random. There's got to be an answer in each box though. Because you want some right, you want some wrong, don't you? There you go. And you saw, without that box, this question requires at least one response per row. So we've done that section. <clears throat> Next. How many dwarves from Thorne Wishy Party? 13. <clears throat> there you go. Click on Next. Who is the Arrow Man of the Lake? This is a drop down box. Here are our options. Was it Aragorn? No, it wasn't. It was bad. 12 points for that. And what do dragons love? Well, they like sleeping, gold, the ark, and stone and treating with hobbits. Who was the wizard and the hobbit? Now, again, this is a multiple, multiple choice and a bit of a trick question. Gandalf, Radagast, and Saruman. Each one of those will get you the points. Bit of a trick question. You could put a ringer in there as well. We'll stick with Gandalf. Click on next. Where did they go in Middle Earth? Our final section. Well, they went to Rivendell. They went to Bree, they didn't go to Buckland, went to the Shire, went to Mirkwood, didn't go to Mordor, and went to the Lonely Mountain, and then submit. So we've submitted our quiz. There it is. So this is what our students, what it'll look like to our students. Now I've turned off one of the settings that we've put on before, which was to um, give the scores immediately, because we've got some free text in there. So here we go, let's go view the scores. Again, this is what the student will see. We had 83 out of 100. Not bad, although pretty terrible since I did the quiz. Scrolling down, you'll see this is what the, the, the students see. Here are the, the wrong answers. Job done. Now, if you've put on the section in this quiz at the top, where you say limit to one response, you won't be able to go in and do it. So once you're happy with it, then select this section. Okay, and click on save. Well, that was how to create a quiz in Google Forms in Google Classroom. Hope you found it interesting. A little bit long-winded, I know, but we did go through an awful lot of the question steps, and I think it is quite interesting in regards to that. Some of the questions lead themselves to mathematics, other leads themselves to the more humanity-based subjects as well. But a very powerful engine, very pow powerful interface. And I hope you all make use of it. I've been the Collaboration Colonel. Thanks very much for watching. And check back for more videos on Google Classroom in the future. See you soon.